Okay, so second stay in the Best Western, uh, it's a different room compared to the last room. This room is actually upstairs on the first floor, which is kind of above reception, but next to a fire exit outside. Uh, so if we start with the bathroom, uh, the bathroom is uh, quite small, uh, the toilet bowl, the water seems to rise up quite, quite far up the bowl when you flush it, and um, the bath. Shower and we'll say a uh, wash basin. Pressure on the tap in the wash basin. It's not the greatest um, but it does. It's adequate. Uh, usual tea and coffee making facilities. And here's a desk with uh, my lunch, bought iron brews, milk, uh, things like that. A wee travel setup. Tiny, tiny TV, as I think is the norm in the Best Western. Uh, the bed, which again, uh, the last time the bed was too soft, again, the bed is really soft. The carpet, again, is really soft. The most bizarre thing about this room, uh, which you may not be able to pick up on the camera, is this is the view of the window. Uh, so you can just see somebody else's window and the noise. I don't know if the microphone's going to pick it up. The noise is just constant. Yeah, this room is like pretty much all night. Uh, close the window over. You've then got these other sliding shutters there. But still quite noisy. And here is the car I was given this week today Vauxhall Astra. But it's not a total letdown because this one is. SRI. Now, when I was a much younger lad, SRIs were a byword for performance, but I don't know what's happened over the years because the performance in this car is absolutely non existent. Um, so, but skipping past that, let's just have a wee look. And actually, the boot is. Well, quite impressive actually. It's quite a large boot, you can fit quite a lot in there. I'm not travelling every day this week, so I've only got a small bag in, in my backpack with all my test equipment. Uh, having a look in the back, the front seat is uh, the seating position for me to drive, which is comfortable. Uh, it looks like there's a decent amount of leg in there. In fact, I don't know what the headroom's like. Seems, seems okay. On the inside of the car, again, uh, standard sort of travel buffet, pack up fruit pastels. It's one of my five a day, bottle of water. If we stand back, we can see see the wheels. There were a few wee dinks and marked on this car when I got it. Um, So the inside's uh, not too bad. The dashboard done a funny thing when I was driving down where uh, the backlit panels suddenly went off and it wasn't a problem because I was driving during the day. I just hope it doesn't happen during the night because I didn't even know if my headlights were on. If it happens during the night, it's going to be disastrous. Comes with cruise control, which is thankfully far easier to set and actually operate compared to the Peugeot 208, which I had the last time. And the Peugeot 208, the stock was like behind here, you couldn't really see it. Vauxhall have done a decent thing and they put on the steering wheel there. Dead simple, easy to use. Press this button here to turn it on, set the speed, that's it. Simple. Over here you get controls for the telephone, the volume and the source on the uh, infotainment system. So, the infotainment system itself is... Um, well, we'll just turn that down there. Um, it's quite good, it's easily laid out, it's simple, you know, it's easy to select between what you want. Obviously, I, I usually hook up my phone to it, get music on there, and, that, and that's what I listen to. Um, you know, oddly enough, to switch it off, you actually need to hold the power switch in, you can't just press it. So you hold it in, and that's it. So, the climate control, I think, um, 
it is a bit disappointing in the car. You don't really know what temperature it's actually set to. So when you change it, you don't actually get, see, so you only get an indication of the, the speed. There's no indication of temperature, so I can turn it, as you can see, I'll turn it right up full there. There's no indication as to what the actual temperature is going to be, um, just the speed. So it took a wee bit of tinkering around, but you know, in the end, it's it, it's fine. It's, it's adequate, I suppose. Uh, manual box, six speed box, and then you've got this sport button and a traction control button. And I'm not really sure what the button in the middle does, but it's not something I, I touched. And oh, it comes with a pen. So apparently now, when I return this car, I have a forum here. Let's get it in the focus here that uh, I basically have to fill in when I return it. So I don't know if there's a problem with the systems there or what, but who knows. The power socket is there. It's got two cup holders. The handbrake is kind of weird. It's actually horrible um, to touch and it leans in a bit to the seat. Uh, the iPod connectivity is in the glove box and I've left nice sweet cutouts there so that you can close the box without crimping your cable. And and that's it, 48 miles to the gallon. You know, it's not bad. It's um, it's probably the most fuel economic SRI I've ever driven. Can't remember the last time I've actually driven an SRI though. It must have been 20 or 21 perhaps. So a good while ago now. Um, but yeah, the car's fine, not totally unpleasant. Uh, as you can see, it's done 15,144 miles. And there's a wee sticker here, which you can't really see. Let me get any focus. Uh, no, I can't. Um, it basically says the car's not to exceed 15,500 miles. So pretty much when I return this car, I think it's going to get sold. So as you can see, it's in the car park here. Uh, there's some Mitsubishi L200 truck. Looks like some of the Get a Mini, get a Ford Focus. Um, give it this bland features. expensive taste. I got a Volkswagen Golf, uh, another Focus and a Volvo. Now well, don't want to give you but, uh, an update here. I have the absolute right to declare Not a national that. emergency. Really 